Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are working with an extreme climbing Oncidium orchid. These types of orchids do exist in the hobby, in which rather than creating growths from their sides more on a horizontal pattern, they tend to climb up leading to having new growths which are basically up in the air, one higher than the other and their roots tend to end up in the air as well. So in the end, the highest growths might actually have new roots that just stop growing, especially in a home setting where humidity might be a little bit low and you won't have a brand new root system developing and sustaining the orchid further. It is quite a bit of a problem and there are quite a few orchids that do this. This particular one is my Eonopsis popcorn Haruri and I would call him an extreme climber because compared to others, his new growths are almost completely on top of the older growths. Some are not so extreme, but he's special, what can I say? Also, mine seems to have some dried old growth here, which, you know what, I need to remove. So today I decided I'm gonna show you what I like to do with my climbing orchids, usually their own sidiums. There are many things that can be done and I've tried many things in the past. I've tried adding sphagnum moss on top or placing them like on a slope. I didn't really like how it looked like and how it behaved further on. If you can get away with mounting these orchids, I think that's the easiest solution for them to make them look pretty and still have those roots attached to something. But if you cannot take care of mounts properly, we're stuck with pots. What do we do here? Well, <laughs> repot. That's what I like to do. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. So I hope you'll enjoy today's video. And before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it, subscribe for more videos. It is absolutely free. But if you're feeling a little extra about it, consider further supporting this channel by checking out the merch using the affiliate links down below, becoming a member or using the super thanks option below this video. Right to then. So as I was saying, we need to repot this orchid, which means first we need to unpot it. I need my tray and everybody asks me about <laughs> this tray. It is an Ikea tray. I think it's one of their most iconic trays and one of the best, in my opinion, it is large enough to do whatever sorts you want with it. And I also need some gloves. I have some used ones there. By the way, side note, I had some nail extensions for my wedding. They were hard gel. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> It is so not for me. And now I took them off and my nails are even more brittle than they were before. I was assembling an Ikea cabinet and one of my nails, it's so thin, whenever I was like doing something with it, it would just flex and hurt like nothing else. So, uh, yeah. No, let's not do that again. Luckily, I don't plan on getting married again. So, as you can see, my Oncidium is potted in a self-watering pot. This particular Oncidium really, really, really likes its water. It does very, very well. Whenever I keep it in a more water-retentive medium, the problem is all of the roots are outside the pot. So, what use, right? But I do believe it's potted in pure sphagnum moss. Yep. Oh, it actually did require a repot because... For whatever reason, it's one of those setups in which I put sphagnum moss and bark, a mixture. Why did I do that? Because the bark, <laughs> the bark is like paper now. The sphagnum moss that I use and which you will always find linked down below, it's a very good quality sphagnum moss. And left alone, it can even last three years for me. The bark though, no, it's, um, it's not that good quality, but I find it locally, it's affordable, so that's why I use it rather than importing all the time, right? But yeah, this setup lasted only a year and a little bit. So I'm going to remove the medium from between the roots. The thing is, all of these roots come from the older growth, which I think you can see is gone. So first and foremost, let's remove this old growth because it's just going to break down in the medium and that's not fun. I'm trying to rip it off so I don't use my shears. There you go, it worked. This one actually did not have any good root, but we have another old growth here. Let's see. Oh, this one didn't have much roots either. Yay, so all of these roots are actually coming from the good side of the orchid. But what I wanna do is pot these roots inside the medium as well. And right now they're very brittle. They're not flexible at all. So what we're gonna do is soak this orchid. So I have some water in a pot here. I'm gonna try to lower the orchid as much as to soak the roots. 
And look at that. <laughs> they changed color. Yes, Oncidium roots can change color from white to green as well, just like Phalaenopsis, provided they have access to light. The roots inside the pot did not have access to light, so they don't have chlorophyll. It does not mean they're unhealthy, it doesn't mean they're dead. It just means they do not contain chlorophyll, so they will not switch to green. But the so-called aerial roots will switch to green. We see? That is good. It means they are absorbing water, which also means that they will help the orchid further develop when we pot the orchid into actual medium and when they have access to water more. Right, so I'm gonna clean up my little tray here. Keep the tag, oh, look at this. It looks like it came out of a soil medium, right? No, it's the bark, but the bark is so broken down and degraded, it's all mush. Wow. It was time, it was actually time for this orchid and I will never mix this moss with this bark again because they don't match up quality wise. All right, so basically what I personally prefer to do is repot these guys and basically divide them, remove the older growth which is further down and I like to do this periodically. With this one, once a year, year and a half, is the way to go to maintain it the way that I want to maintain it but others which are not such extreme climbers you can get away every two years with your typical maintenance to remove the old growth as well so I prefer to give up that I guess bushy effect for having roots in the medium my environment as many of you know is very very warm and I do benefit a lot from potting mixes Growing orchids mounted is out of the question here. There is no physical time in my day to water them and keep them well hydrated on a mount situation. So what I'm gonna use is sphagnum moss directly, no mixture with bark. We'll have bark on top just as a top layer, but not throughout this sphagnum moss because it's gonna degrade very fast. And now I'm just going to try and place the roots inside the medium as well. Since I soaked them, they're very flexible now, so I'm not gonna break them. There we go. And it's not so important to put the older growth at the edge because it's not gonna extend on a horizontal, it's just gonna climb up. So I'm not gonna bother necessarily with the position way too much, I'm gonna keep it rather centered and then place sphagnum moss around the roots again. By the way, I pre-soaked my moss. It is much easier to work with it while it's wet, so I don't have to water this orchid after I repot, but generally I do water my orchids right after repots. No issue there. So just gonna place sphagnum moss around the roots, and when I put the sphagnum moss in, I'm not going to compact it. If I so desire, I can compact all of the things that I put in here to a very, very tiny layer one centimeter, half an inch, but I'm not going to compress it. I'm gonna keep it nice, fluffy, and airy. Even if this orchid really enjoys its water, it's still an epiphyte, and compacted medium can still lead to root suffocation. So everything is very, very fluffy, just very water retentive, because things will start to evaporate and dry in no time. All right, I don't need to bother with the bigger air pockets. Now I'm going to add bark on top. I add the bark because here in my environment, I'm prone to having cyanobacteria on top of very wet stuff, such as sphagnum moss. And cyanobacteria releases toxins, which I found are very detrimental to orchid roots. They really burn root tips and not only, I've had them burn entire stems on jewel orchids. Cyanobacteria, as the name suggests, is not really an algae, it's some bacteria that can photosynthesize and look like an algae. If we cut the light, it cannot develop. Easy peasy, right? So that's why I add sphagnum moss on top. I just put a pretty thin layer, as much as to cover all of that sphagnum moss. Now, this bark will not degrade as fast because it is not surrounded by water all the time, like it would be inside the pot. So I will not need to repot this orchid again in one year. Well, I will because it is a climber, but if it weren't a climber as maintenance, as routine, I would not have to repot it as fast. I can get away with it, hopefully for three years. That is the goal. It is much more economic, saves money, saves time, saves resources, right? So I'm pretty much done with it. Let's put the tag back. Oh, you guys, I forgot to add slow release fertilizer. Of course I did. Hold on. 
I've not repotted anything in a while and I forgot the order of things. So I have here slow release fertilizer. It's an Osmocote one. It's always mentioned down below in the description. Just scroll all the way down. And I like to add slow release fertilizer in my pots because sometimes I can get a little too busy to prepare the water. So I just use the water straight. And this makes sure that I have some nutrients inside my medium. So I'm gonna use an aquarium tweezers, an aquascaping tweezers, and I will just insert the beads in the sphagnum moss layer. It is not enough to leave them on top because on top it's very, very dry. So the beads will not dissolve and they will not feed the plant. So I'm just inserting them down as deep as I can put them in the sphagnum moss layer so that they have access to water. All right, now we're all done. I like to add the date, this is why I remembered, because I wanna know when I put the fertilizer in. And I refresh the fertilizer every year or so. And voila, we are done. I just need to find a decorative pot for this one, but we're pretty much done. And that's how I like to go about climbing orchids. Now, before I let you go, let's clear up some misconceptions you will find here and there. Some people saying, oh, if they climb up or if they put roots outside of the pot or things of the source, they don't like the medium. But that is false. Orchids climb up or put roots outside of the pot because it is their nature. Some of them will do it more than others, depending how big of a root producer you have. There are orchids which produce more roots more frequently than others. And obviously there are some which will climb more than others. Some will not climb at all. Some will do it a little bit, so you barely notice it. Some will be extreme, like this little guy. So don't worry if that happens, it is absolutely normal. An orchid which usually does not climb will not all of a sudden become this extreme climber. It just doesn't work like that. So if you were wondering how to handle them, I hope this video helped. I find it less hassling than trying to put sphagnum moss everywhere. If I would do that, it would get covered by cyanobacteria and it would end up absolutely damaging the roots more than dry air. So how do you like to go about these things? Let me know in the comments below. And with that said, it is time to bid you farewell. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. Subscribe for more videos. And if you're into aquariums and aquascaping and things of the sorts, check out my second channel, which is dedicated only to fish keeping and aquascaping from now on. Still has a few orchid videos, which I'm gonna transfer in the following weeks, but you get the picture. So with that said, hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.